Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon or good evening, depending on where you are. I'm Matthew here from Bead Spider. Thanks for joining. On today's show, I'm going to be teaching you how to make a beautiful semi-precious gemstone cuff bangle. I'll just show you a quick picture of it uh, so that you'll know exactly what it is that I'm going to be making. Uh, it's this one just here. So this is the beautiful gemstone cuff that I'm going to be making. It uses memory wire, semi-precious gemstone beads. I've got four millimeter um, round metallic beads. I've also got three by four crystals in there as well. So donuts or rondelles, depending on where you are uh, or as you know them. Um, I'm also using size 10 seed beads and head pins as well. Um, so yes, without further ado, let's say hello to a few people. Um, as always, if you want to check out last week's show, um, we did Kumahimo, which I made the lovely holiday Kumahimo bracelet, which was eight strands. I did a I did two different methods for doing beaded Kumahimo, so you can check that out on the Bead Spider. Um, <clears throat> website or you can also find it um, on YouTube and Facebook. I did the holiday and I also did the four strand with the Venus bracelet. Um, and if you fancy knowing what's coming up next week, I'm doing the gorgeous dancing cubes crystal bracelet, which is this one just here. And it comes in lots of lovely colors. They're on sale at the moment. And I'm also going to be showing you what I'll be doing next Wednesday, which is the gorgeous honeycomb crystal bracelet, which is this one just here. Sorry, there's the honeycomb crystal bracelet. And it comes in lots of different colors. Again, that one is also going to be on sale. So <clears throat> let's uh, bring it back here. I hope I'm not out of sync. I might be a little bit. I think the camera is just lagging a little for some reason, but Hopefully it'll fix itself in a minute or so. It's just been giving me a bit of grief at the beginning, but hopefully it'll fix shortly. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be making that gorgeous little bangle. If you want the free instructions, we have that available on the um, on the website for uh, for free. Just head to the link up in the description and you will be able to get that for free. We also have a sale on our gemstone beads, our little gemstone chips. Um, but yeah, also last thing that I'll, I'll let you know about, on this coming, at midnight tonight, the Kumahimo, which I'll show you the uh, a little demo piece I played with because I did Kumahimo just on the weekend. I also did a little test using some gemstone chips. So if you have a look at that just there, I did Kumahimo with gemstone chips, which I sort of did a little piece which can be made into like a, a wrap bracelet sort of type vibe like this with some gemstone chips. But yeah, if that takes your fancy, grab some gemstone chips as well and have a look at my uh, tutorial that I did on the weekend. Um, Oh, also the dancing cube and honeycomb patterns are available. If you want to head to the website, I'll just show you the little link. Um, this is, here we go. Here you can see I've got the um, gemstone cuff pattern just here, which is for free. Uh, I'm using three by four crystals. We always use them very, very often. So if you want to have a little look on the website, you can get a discount on the bundle, but that bundle discount is ending at midnight tonight. All of our chips are on sale just here. So you can see that. Plus we've got lots of the different findings. Memory wire should be in there too, because I'm using that as part of this tutorial. And then I'll just show you really quickly our upcoming videos. Here we go. You can see just here, this one is the Dancing Cubes, which is going to be on Saturday, the 27th. And then on the left here, the 1st of July is the Honeycomb Tutorial Products. So if you want to head to this page where it will show you what our upcoming shows are, on Facebook, I've put the link at the top so that you will be able to find it really, really quickly and easily. Um, and then the 
Um, where am I? Sorry. Uh, and then, yes, in the comments section at the very top on both YouTube and Facebook, you'll be able to find a link to this page, which is upcoming shows. Otherwise, the link for this uh, gemstone cuff page is in the description. So that's where you'll get this free instruction for what I'm making today. Um, so let's say hello to a few people, see who is already here, who's watching, who's on. Um, just give me a quick second now. Here we go. So don't forget, I'm making today the gemstone cuff bracelet just here. So that's what today's plan is. Uh, so yes, um, let's see who is on and joining us. I'll say a few quick hellos and then I'll jump on over and we'll start making nice and quick today. So um, let's see, we've got Linny on. Hi, Linny. Um, Sue is on, we've got Kelly, Evelyn, um, we've got Nina as well, hi. Uh, Adriana, she's she's coming a, a regular, thank you for watching as well. Stacy's on, uh, Maxine, she's watching from upstairs. And then on YouTube, we have also got Marcia, Carol and Caroline. Thank you all for joining um, in. Um, I'll just show you one last time what we're going to be making as I move the camera down so that we can have a look. Hi to June, by the way, who's just popped on as well. Um, let's have a look now down, bring this little thing down and let's get in position to start working. Ooh, a little bit lower, there we go. And I'll just zoom in a touch and then I'll bring you up on screen so that you can join me for everything I'm doing. There we go. And turn up my brightness a little. There we go. So today I'm going to be using tools wise. I've got some, um, wait a second. I've got some just bolt cutter sort of cutters here that you can use just any old garden cutters that you need this is for cutting the memory wire um <clears throat> you you don't need specialist tools for this you can literally go and get your garden shed cutters whatever you've got in the work shed these will do as long as they're nice heavy uh duty ones we've got angelica from berlin thanks for joining angelica um so I'm also going to be using round nose pliers, which are these ones just here. And then I've got uh, a lady sent us a comment just the other day. Uh, her name was Catherine, I think. Uh, she sent us a really great comment uh, on a tip, which I'll show you that one for making these two piece head pinned um, little pieces like that one just there. So first thing that we're going to do, as I said, I'm using little gemstone pieces just here which are these fellas just here little gemstone chips the first thing that you want to do which is quite important let me just get myself nice and close here we go first thing you want to do which is quite important is find gemstone chips that are roughly about the same size from hole to hole so you can see just here i've made a couple the reason that you want them i'll zoom in for you the reason you want them to be quite close in size from hole to hole is because then you can get really consistent sized pieces for your um, your little head pin pieces like these ones here. So it's important to sort of go through your little pieces and try them out and look with a little head pin and find ones that are approximately the same size from hole to hole. So that's the very first step that you need to do is choose the best gemstone chips for your little project that you're going to be making. Um, as I am, oh, I'll just pop on the screen what I'm using, by the way. Um, here we go. So if you want to grab the materials, head to the link in the description. I'm using semi-precious gemstone chips. I've got memory wire, which is just here, which is really useful for making bangle type jewelry. Uh, let me zoom out a touch so that we can see everything on my mat a bit better. Um, we also have some little seed beads that I'll be using. These will just work as spacing between my chips if you can see them there's little beads in there i've got some four millimeter round beads metallic ones 
These ones are in rose gold, but you can also use silver if you prefer, or gold, whatever it is that you want to use. Um, plus, I'll be using the three by four millimeter. I call them donuts. You might know them as rondelles, but they're little crystals that are three millimeters by four millimeters. So I'll just hold one up so that it's good thing. I've got such pale skin. You can you can see this quite light sort of rosy rosaline colored bead on the back of my very very pale hands <laughs> uh, but yeah so you can see that just there it's a uh, sort of a donut shaped rondelle three by four millimeter that i'm using um, so <clears throat> first thing i will do now is wait a minute i just need to cut myself one of these little pieces just here just give me a second the first thing we're going to do is cut ourselves some memory wire so if you've got your little loops of memory wire around um, here's my memory wire just here what we're going to do is just cut ourselves some little pieces with that heavy duty um, wire that we that we used uh, those cutters, sorry, those heavy duty cutters that I that I had just before. I'm going to use some of them to uh, to cut my memory wire. So if I just bring in my tool, what we need to do, I'll just show you the first little diagram here. So what I'll be doing, I'm going to overlap the um, little ends just there. So first thing I need to do is find pretty much where that point is. You need to have about a centimeter of overlap with your memory wire. So if we have a look just here. So here is, whoops, here's the end of my memory wire. It's getting a bit tangled on me. There we go. There's the end of my memory wire there. Um, what I'm gonna do is overlap it so just let it sit in its sort of natural size and then find the overlap at about the one centimeter mark just here so um bring in my tool kelly asks me if i have my my cup of tea with me today i certainly do so anyway you can see just here i've got an overlap oh, it's a bit a bit hard to focus on but yeah see how my memory wire there's an overlap there this will give me about the right sort of size that I need for making those loops. If I just get my hand in the way so that it will show you exactly where I'm cutting, you'll see that there's a, a little overlap. There we go. Let's hope it comes into focus. Where's the end? There it is. So see that? So I've got an overlap. I'll just cut it there. And then you do the same again so that you have two pieces that have that small little overlap like that um, i'll just show you um here we go there's your little overlap there so i'm going to do the same with my second piece i'll just give that a cut as well same sort of size of overlap and then let's get ready to start working so i'll just pop that there so there we go so if we have a look again i'll just put it big on the screen so see how i've got a little overlap um there with the ring so what i'm going to do is create um a little loop like this one just here so that it will create a bit of a lock at the back of my uh my piece just there so that's sort of the the important thing that i want to be doing is having that nice little overlap so that um I can curl it backwards and it will sort of come into position like that right where I want it to be. So that will hopefully um, put it into position much, much better. So let's just pop it back. I'll show you how I do that. If I've got my little piece just here, um, I will take my round nose cutters which is just this there. Hi to Joe, by the way, who's just joined in. And Sharon asks, did I borrow the handyman's cutters? Well, if you'd like to, uh, if you think my father is the handyman, I don't know how handy he is, but uh, you know, he, he, they're his tools. So they were literally just out the garden shed. So um, 
that's literally all that you need to use. Uh, by the way, if you're enjoying my tutorials, don't forget to um, like them and, and share. Share this video uh, on your wall or maybe in some Facebook groups uh, who, who um, for like for jewelry making, because they um, will be a great place to get these videos sort of shown and known as it were. So anyway, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to create that loop. And if you have a look at the little picture in the top corner there, it is sort of overlapping exactly in that little um, corner right there towards your wire. So what I'll do is just make a loop, but I'm going to roll it in towards the center of the ring. So I'll got my hand like this, and then I'll just roll it inwards, in, 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 all the way so that it loops to the inside like this of my memory wire so if i just lift that up you can see there's a little loop just there that i've made there we go and um, the plan is i'll just close it in a bit further and then um, that will work as like a little securing end at the end of my my piece just there so let me just roll that in there we go and now that's yeah, a little bit neater. So even look at that. So I just rolled that around just a little bit further. Where am I? I'm out of screen, sorry. There we go. So see that? Now that's nice and closed. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to create the first little um, one of these pieces just here. There we go. So I'll just make, let's get into focus, a few of these. Uh, let me just count exactly how many I'm going to need. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 that I've got for, for the one that I'm about to make. Um, but yeah, the what I plan to do, I'll make 17 of these, but I'll just show you making one, obviously. So as I said, it's quite good with this if you want your cuff to be wider you can just make these little beaded sections a bit longer so the length that you make these it will give you a differing size for the the size of your um bangle there so it will spread the two pieces so if we just have a look at the the actual piece just there the bigger you make these little um sections just here the quicker uh, the, the the wider apart it will be um this particular one that i'm showing you has uh on the screen has two chips one i made earlier has three chips but i'm going to just continue in the same sort of style of doing it with with so see how that one's three chips that would make a slightly bigger one but i'm going to only make a two chip one because that's what my already made ones are they're, they're all two chips so if we have a little look once more at the image see how i've just got two chips in between each one uh that's my plan for um getting all that into position and sorted and fixed and working and everything so that it's all um working really nicely for me so that's the sort of size that i want so don't forget it's important that you try and find chips that are all sort of matching size from hole to hole so that you end up with lots of pieces that are the same size approximately like uh, whoops i'm just out of shot there there we go see how they're the same sort of size that's what we're, we're aiming for um just there so you want lots and lots of pieces all the same size so i'll make one of these just now i'll thread on first things first i'll make a little loop at one end let's zoom in shall we let's hope that just comes in here we go and here we go so i've got myself a little hand pin just here uh, and I'm going to thread on my beads. So one little C bead first. Oops. Just thread that on there. So first you want to put on a little seed bead. Oops. There's my seed bead gone. There we go. Just grab my seed beads. 
Ah, they're jumping all over the place. They're not helping me out today, are they? They do not want to work. So I'll just wonder here. Wait a second. There we go. And just slide that onto your... Oh, no, first thing I want to do, I want to make a loop. I'm not even thinking. So the first thing we'll do, we don't need the little head at the end of my head pin. So I'll just, again, I'll use those big heavy-duty cutters. It's always important to cover your work like this. Um, there we go. Um, there we are. Now... Oh, Kelly asks, was that the music of the Mr. Whippy van? Yes, it was. It just drove past just a minute ago. Uh, a 99p uh, with a fake, says Carolyn. Um, but yeah, that was that was our little ice cream truck. They go by every every day, it seems. Well, it's especially warm today, so they've um, they've definitely just just gone by oh by the way if you want to be featured in my show i'll just show a few of the images that people have been making see here's my little featured on if you want to be featured on the show email us a picture of what you're doing what you've been making to live at bigspider.co.uk and you can be on the show we do it every wednesday and we do a bigger version on um on our saturday shows so i'll just show a couple of images today but send your little images right now and I will um, try and feature you on the show. But first things first, I'll just show you some of the images that came in uh, already. So that honeycomb bracelet that I'm going to be making uh, in just a few days, funnily enough, we had one sent into us by Sue. Uh, that is one of our honeycomb um, bracelets just there that, we, that we've made. Uh, and she has sent one in. So if we have and have a look, um, this is... See, there's the, the honeycomb bracelet that we do. Wait, I'll just see if I can find another picture. And she's made one of those. So thanks to Sue for your picture there. That is lovely. Um, we also have this one here. Caroline from Devon has sent in this beautiful piece just here, which it looks like it's a peyote twin beads and then a varying size of seed beads to make these nice, beautiful beaded beads that she's joined together. So thanks, uh, Caroline, for... Um, sending us those pictures and don't forget if you want to be featured on the show send us your pictures to live at beadspider.co.uk and we'll get you on to the show um as as soon as we can so if it's not today it will be either on um yeah it'll probably be on on saturday or at the end of today's show so let's just come back here with me one second Ooh, there we are that's the spot just there sorry about that um just trying to find my thing um but yeah so what i'm going to do is now i'll thread i'll make a little loop with the uh end of this little head pin let's zoom in a bit um <coughs> so uh now if i've got my little head pin piece just here what i'll do is just take my little cutters and just cut that off so it's always important to cover your work when you're cutting things because you don't want to damage them and what i'll do is much like i did with the end of that piece of memory wire i'm going to create a little beaded loop so you can adjust the size to where you want it let me just get that in position adjust it to the spot that you that you want it and so obviously the closer to the tip the smaller the loop will be and the closer down the end it will be bigger so if you try if you want to keep your pieces all the same you can keep the mark a line to show exactly where it is that you want but anyway what i'll do is just create a little loop like so oops drop my piece a bit there uh, there we go and i'll just roll it roll it roll it round and round until it's sort of nicely in position if i over roll it a little that's fine because i'm going to bend it back into position so that it's super neat in just a second so i'll pinch at the bottom of that loop as you can see there's the little loop there pinch at the bottom of that and then just bend this back into position so that it's nice and straight and you can see that gives you a lovely round little beaded head right there isn't that nice so that's um ready now to start working with um 
Oh, Sue, thanks for the shout out. I enjoyed making the honeycomb bracelet. So Sue, who made the uh, the honeycomb, she's currently watching. So, um, you know, if anyone wants to say, Sue, your piece was lovely, she's right there in the comments and can see on Facebook. Um, so now let's just thread on. So I'm going to match the design of these ones just here. And I'm going to start with a seed bead, do a little... Um, chip just there another seed bead a chip and a seed bead so what you can see what i've done with this is that they work out even though this one is quite big hole to hole and this one's quite small hole to hole in the end it works out around about the same size because you've used sort of ones that make up a similar size so almost try and find your little pieces and put them together and sort of match them up so that you get lots of matching pieces so what i'll do is one seed bead just thread that on there Oops, sorry, I was a bit out of screen. I'll just bring my seed beads into screen that I'm using. Uh, let's just pop them here. There's a couple of seed beads. So I've got my three seed beads. Um, one seed bead, one gemstone chip, one more seed bead. Here we go. And another gemstone chip and one more little seed bead and I'll just slide that down to my loop. So see that there? Perfect. Um, hi to Karen in Louisiana. Thank you for joining. Um, don't forget everyone, if you're watching and enjoying, like and share the video so that others can enjoy it too. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is bend the top of my little piece just here so that it's at a right angle. So I know these beads are different, but you can literally use any beads that you want. I just really like using the gemstone chips because I think it looks super effective. Um, but yeah, don't forget, by the way, if you're only viewing for the very first time, um, up in the description, we have a link to our newsletter so you can subscribe so that you'll find out every time we're doing videos. So if you want to um, be aware of when we're doing videos, just sign up and join in. So now a great tip, if you have a look at the image, see how, wait, I'll put it back on the screen being actually because it's a bit easier to see. See how the loop at the bottom, it's like flat. And then I've turned the little piece so that it's exactly at, in the sort of the same line as that loop at the bottom. So see how the loop is flat, and then when I roll it, it'll make the, the loop at the top the same way. So what you do, that helps to get your two pieces laying in the same direction. So you can see my loop is flat this way. So I need my to bend my loop in this same sort of direction. So I'll just get my thumb in position. I'll try and lay this. I'll put it a bit flat on the table so we can see. And I'll zoom in a bit more. Oh, where are we? Let's get it in position. You're gonna zoom in for me. There we go. So um, yes, I'll just bring this here, and then so with this loop flat, I will try and hold that in position, and then bend so that it's in the same line. If it doesn't get in the same line, it doesn't matter too much because I'll sort that out a bit later on. So that's not going to be um, a problem. So see that. So the loop, well, if I hold it up in the same way as the image, now my loop and my flat piece are the same as the image. There we go. So how good is that? So now what I'm going to do, I don't need such a long piece. I only need enough to make the same sort of loop as this. So what I'll do, I'll get my handy dandy heavy duty cutters again. And at around about the one centimeter mark, that's all you need. To, to make your, your loop. I'll bring in my cutters, right about there, and then I'll cover everything because we don't want bits to go flying. And I'll just give it a little cut like that. And then that way, pieces don't go flying. So uh, let's just pop that there. Um, here we are. Aisha Flora says, hi, I love all your tutorials. Thank you for watching. Um, I really appreciate that. having a quick sip of my tea just there. So now what I'm going to do is create a second loop with that 
second image. So if I just show you on the big screen, so I'm going to create that second loop now. See, look, I've used even different beads compared to the, the last one. All my photos seem to be a bit all over the place, but that one maybe shows it a bit better. So anyway, I'm going to just create a loop there on the top section <coughs> so that it's exactly the same as, uh, as as that one in the photograph. So again, it doesn't matter if you don't get it aligned. I'm going to show you a tip that was commented into us uh, to, to get them aligned. So again, you want to try and get it in that same sort of position. If you've got your tool, see how my hand, wait a second, I'll show you. Uh, see how my hand is upside down. Oh, we jumped a bit there. Uh, my hand's upside down because then that gives me a nice big rotation of movement when I want to roll my head pin. So I'll just get that aside and I'll roll, 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 roll all the way over. And then I'll just edge it around a little bit more. And then I'll try and get it nicely aligned by doing that same little technique that I did. There we go. And now if you have a look, my two little loops, they're relatively close to the same plane, but what you can do now, wait, I'm just out of shot. Sorry about that. Um, there we go. I'm, there we go. So I'm got it just on the plane there now. And if I, what you can do, you can take two pliers and you can sort of turn them slightly against each other. So there we go. Um, now, if I just, now, if you rotate one in one direction and one in the other, so this one, I'm going to rotate this way. So like this, and then this side, I'm going to rotate downwards until they are lined up and match each other nice and evenly. So just rotate. See, look, I'll, I'll even put it out so that they're completely skew ift like this here and then you can see this one's flat and this one's nowhere near grab this little piece here grab this one here and then just rotate them both in opposite directions and sort of meet in the middle so that they're both now perfectly flat there we go how good's that? Uh, we've got quite a few people who've only just turned in. Monica, hi, thanks for just joining in with us. Sorry she's late, doesn't matter. Um, Ida from Durham's just joined in, and we've got Sandy um, and Sarah. Good morning to Sarah as well. Um, so, so now that I've got this piece just here, what I'm going to do is start building my little um, bangle. So I'll just pop that just there zoom out a little actually so the next thing that we're going to do is start threading on to our <coughs> little piece just here so the first thing i will thread on is one of my little um pieces that i've made and i'm going to slide that all the way down to the ring at the opposite end it doesn't matter if they're a little bit in the middle but essentially you just got to make yourself a nice sort of pattern that will uh, work nicely for you um, so that you can get that happening really, really sort of um, uh, looking really effective. Um, whatever the pattern that you choose to go for, it doesn't matter. Um, I will just zoom out a bit so that we can actually see what I'm doing while I do it. And, um, and then I will continue by adding those little bits onto the memory wire. So as I said, I've got my little piece of memory wire. Um, I'll just bring it in, here we go. Uh, there's my memory wire. I'm gonna start sliding on my pieces to the memory wire. Let's zoom out a bit more because we don't need to be anywhere near as close now that I'm working uh, like this. Uh, so here we go. So the first thing we want to do is just at one end, thread on my little beaded loop piece like this. And then a pattern design that I really like, which is the one that I've done in the um, actual image here, is if you have a little look between each one, I've got a three by four crystal, a four mil round, and then another three by four crystal. So I'm gonna do exactly the same as that little pattern on here. So um, with my little piece just here at the bottom, 
my computer, uh, my, my camera seems to be delaying a little bit today. I'm not quite sure why that's happening, but hopefully it will, it seems to fix itself and then lose itself. I'm not sure why it's doing that, but hopefully it will um, start working a bit more in time in a second. But anyway, um, so anyway, let's just start threading on now my little rows uh, until I've sort of got my piece about the right size that I want it to be. Let's zoom out even further so that we can see everything. So I will, like in that image, I'll add in one three by four crystal. Let's thread it on. Oh, it's a bit stiff today. I'm not threading very well at all today. There we go. Followed by one four mil round bead and then one more three by four crystal so there we go then i will take because i've got lots here's some i made earlier uh lots of these little pieces that i made already i will just thread one of them on then another three by four crystal and then a four mil round three by four crystal oops there we go and then you just continue doing this until you come all the way around i'm using by the way i showed you the amethyst color at the beginning let's just move my camera slightly because it's pointing a bit too far up one second let's just bring it down a bit there we go now we'll see much better i think it was just be out of position just earlier hopefully this will work a bit better um so now now I'll just thread on another one and we'll continue. And while I'm doing that, let's let's have a chat, shall we? Um, in case you didn't know, yesterday was uh, Jermaine's birthday. So we had a, a lovely weekend. I went and visited my, my sister up in London. We all had a, a bit of a holiday up in London the last few days. Uh, for for Jermaine's for Jermaine's birthday, she turned 21 again. Um, but yeah, <laughs> um, <coughs> oh, Thelma asks, I'm a little bit late. Will I be able to see later from the beginning? Yes, you most certainly will. If you can't rewind right now, don't worry. If you like, um, I can send you a link. Um, and anyone else who wants the link to be able to watch later, let me know, and I will send you all a link. Um, so that you can watch from the very, very beginning. But yeah, as I was saying, my sister, so we, we all went to her house because she's uh, she's had her, her first child just recently, which is the first grandchild uh, in the family um, earlier this year. And so we all went up to visit her for, for mum's birthday. But it was really nice because my, my nephew, he um, he's about... Uh, he's almost six months old now, so it's like a really lovely age that he's sort of becoming now, that he's sort of growing, his personality is coming out, but, uh, you know, you can sort of see the, um, the, the you know, his likes and dislikes starting to form, like we, we gave him some, some solid food on, on uh, one of his first times eating solid food uh fairly recently um when i was there on the weekend it was one of his first times and he had some avocado banana and uh and i'm trying to remember what was the other thing i think maybe apricot and he didn't he didn't want to touch the apricot the whole time he's like oh no 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 and then we gave it to him and he sort of had a big gobble of it and then he just couldn't stop he was like more more eating it trying to like get it into his mouth and you know really struggling obviously because he's because he's not particularly coordinated just yet but you know he uh he's he's very very cute and so yesterday we had a really lovely dinner um all together uh because we because we're locked down at the moment we haven't seen too much of each other uh, and everything so uh, i made my own home version of kfc style chicken which i'm getting not to toot my own horn but you know i'm getting quite good at uh making the home southern fried style chicken um but yeah um <coughs> and and then and then we, we it was a it was quite a multicultural meal because we we also had like a french salad and my sister's husband he's italian so there was italian influences as well and then we also had some um 
these potato rusty type things, which was a, a German influence. So it was all a bit of a, a, a hodgepodge mix mash dinner that we made last night, which was which was super yummy. But um, you know, for Jermaine's birthday, it was really it was really nice to to sort of celebrate it all together since we haven't seen each other as much as we as we usually would when. Uh, when things are a bit more relaxed. So you can see I'm just continuing on here, threading on bead after bead after bead. Um, so same pattern again, it's a crystal, then a little four mil round, and then a crystal, followed by one of my little, um, I should move these crystals over, uh, and then followed by one of those little head pin pieces that we made. So the little, um, I'll just show you the image. Uh, lots of these. So a crystal, then a four mil round, then another crystal, and then one of those little pieces that you can see up there in the top corner. That's um, the, the the order that I'm threading. So I'm, I'm, I'm getting there quite quickly. These bangles, they don't take too long once you get uh, your little pieces made. I'm currently using gemstone wise. I showed you the amethyst, which is a slightly darker purple, which is this one just here. But what I'm using, which is a little bit lighter, a little bit paler, sort of softer pink, um, just here, this is the lavender amethyst. So I'm using lavender amethyst here and then amethyst amethyst up here. So you can see I've got different sizes. These ones are quite small. So this will make a piece a little bit thinner, but you can make nice big wide pieces if you want a really big thick cuff section as well. So that's uh, a possibility, just whichever one you prefer. Um, but yeah, so I'll just continue threading on. I'm not too far now. In total, you need, I, I find a good size is 17 of these little links. So I'll just add the last few now as I'm going, and then I'll show you how we will create the, the second half of our little bangle because it's not long now. It's only a few more minutes and then and then the whole thing will be finished. Um, so here we go. And then do you know what? Actually, I'm going to make this one Maxine sized. So I'm going to make it one little link less. You can easily adjust the size of this by just reducing the number of little links in your patterns until it's sort of the right size that you would like the bangle to be for you. The reason we have such a, a sort of a large piece is it gives you the flexibility to change the size at any time if you want to. So it does work out quite easily like that. Um, now, there we go. I need one more link. Here we go few more links so not too many more and then just continue on and you can see I mean you could even just have a, a bangle like this it's like it's quite lovely and hang charms off the bottom if you wanted to but I really like turning it into the bangle which don't forget if you want the free instructions you can get those from our website they're available for free for the next couple of days um, until Saturday. So if you're watching after Saturday, it's too late. Uh, but yeah, the free instructions, head to the link in the description um, and that will take you to the page where you can get the instructions and everything else um, is there as well. And our gemstones are on sale. So if you're a gemstone lover, um, these little chips, they come in double length strands. Uh, so I think it's a 32 inch strand that you get um, and they're all on sale. I can't remember exactly the, the level of discount that we put them on, but they are discounted. And of course, we have our bundle of uh, three by four crystals. That's in there as well, and that's discounted too. So um, you can get those all on there. And then of course, which I'll just pop it at the bottom so that you can see um, if you, here we go. This is where you can see all the materials that I'm using today. Um, that gives you just on there on the ticker on the bottom. And don't forget, um, definitely help us out with sharing this video. Um, you know, come on, comment everyone. We wanna see your, your comments all coming in as well. So um, let us know what you've been doing. What's the weather like where you are right now? Um, give us all that sort of information on uh, in the comments section. And of course, if you want to know when I'm doing more live tutorials, jump on to the link up the top that says subscribe to our newsletter, because then we will let you know every time I'm doing a new 
live tutorial uh, so that you can join in as well. Um, so I've just finished now. I've got my bangle pretty much at the right size. And then I finish with a uh, one of my little links like this just here. So I'll just show you the instruction image. Wait a minute. So I started threading them on. And now I've got it so that you can see there at the very, very end, I've got only my my links uh, showing at the very, very end. Um, at this point, what I'm going to do now is try and see how it's already all finished off on that end. I'm going to create on this little corner just here, which I'll just show you. Wait, let's bring me back on screen here. Um, so this little corner just here, I'm going to create a loop the same as the one in my little step diagram. So I'll just put that on the screen again. And then you can see I've got that little spot just there. And this is where I need to create a loop. So you can see I've got all this extra wire just here. You can just cut off the vast majority of it and leave yourself about a centimeter or so um, so that they are um, just in about a centimeter or so um, from the from the end so I'll just come in so you can see I'm around about a centimeter from the end maybe I'll even go a little bit closer just about there and that will give me space to make a loop at the opposite end so you've got to be careful when you're doing this keep everything on the end if you're laying it down it does tend to be a little bit easier and then what you do get my other piece out of the way here clean up my my work area. I always end up with a really messy work area. Do you do you end up with a really messy area um, area when you're working as well? Because I know I am a bit of a messy little bug when it comes to when I'm doing my jewelry making. I get things everywhere. It's just I don't know. It's just who I am. But anyway, so I'll just bring this in, pick it up, hold it down, and then I'll just. Bring my loop and you want to bend it towards the inside of the circle. So I've got myself a nice big loop size because it will give me some good, uh, a nice big loop so that nothing will come off. And I'll roll it in towards the center of the circle. Keep rolling, keep rolling, keep rolling all the way until you've got a nice big loop there can even just keep rolling it until it's exactly the right size that I want it to be and that will make everything nice and secure so let's pop it down so that we can see where I'm at and there we go I'll just pop it down and now I have exactly the same as my diagram so what I want to do now I'll take my second piece of um of um, memory wire just here um, and what I'll start doing is let's let's just show you the instructions nice and big here we go so what I'll do is start connecting the two pieces together so I'll take my second piece of memory wire here and what I'm going to do is just Start threading through and then adding the crystals again. Um, here it is. So let's just begin with that process. Now I'll start at, it doesn't matter which end you start at once you've already sort of linked them to the two pieces just here. But what I need to do is just like in the image, take my wire through here and then add on my crystals and all of that so this is my this is going to be the full size of my bangle so uh that will be its its sort of finished size and what i'll do now uh is just uh here we go thread one through there and then i'll pick up the same pattern as before so one crystal and thread it round, thread it round, thread it round. One crystal, one round bead, and then another crystal inside there. And then I'll just loop it into the next 
little looped piece just there. So this can be a little bit fiddly at the beginning, but you sort of get the hang of it eventually. So if you see there, I've made this sort of connection between the two pieces. So now I'll repeat that again, one crystal, one round, and one crystal. I'm going to complete this all the way to finish. Um, by the way, if you haven't seen it yet, if you want to know what's coming up in upcoming shows, because I'm going to just keep threading this and I can tell you about all the things that are upcoming, we're going to be doing uh, the Dancing Cubes bracelet this weekend, um, which uh, I'll just get it for you. Here we are. So the Dancing Cubes bracelet that I'm going to be making on Saturday uh, looks like this. Um, and you can see it's ultra, ultra, ultra sparkly just there. Um, it comes in lots of different colorways as well, actually, um, that we do. Uh, there's five different colors. It's discounted at the moment until about this time next week. Um, they're all those beautiful sparkly crystal that we that we have uh, just there of those. Um, so yeah, if you if you fancy having a go at this Saturday's tutorial, that's the dancing cubes that I'm going to be making. Um, which again, you can get that from if you have a look at the the link in the comments. I put a little link right there at the top of the comments section that uh, will show you um, all of our upcoming shows. It takes you to wait a minute. I'll just show you the page if we pop on the screen so um it will take you to this page just here and you can see uh here in the center this is the dancing cubes that uh, i'm going to be doing on saturday and then on the first i'm going to be making the honeycomb bracelet so those two are right there from that page and you can see in here so this is the dancing cube here is the pattern which is on sale uh, and then i've got each of the different kits again they're also on sale and then we have lots of different products that you might want if you want to create your own all of that is in that product page and same goes for the tutorial for the first that um if you fancy that you can get the pattern here which is only two pounds and then I've got all these different kits and crystals and things so that you could make your own. But the kit makes two different bracelets in there. So those are the different kits of that. Um, so be sure to definitely jump in and take a little look at that. I'll just show you a couple of pictures of what they're going to look like. Here's the honeycomb just here. There's a few different colorways of it, examples. And then this is the dancing cubes. And again, we call it the dancing cubes because if we have a look at this photograph just here, see how they're all a bit higgledy piggledy jumbled and things like that. Uh, that's a really, really nice little design. And so what I have done is made it so that it's the same sort of look. So that's that um, little piece just there. Um, but yeah, so I'll just continue on now. Um, Oh, I need to bring up my comments again. I can't see what everybody's been saying to me. Uh, have you ever used flat memory wire? I haven't actually. I've seen it before, I think. And um, is that the one where it's like almost like great for doing hair hair bands and things like that? Is that the is that the one that you mean? Because I haven't. I don't know the 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 thing that you mean when you say flat. Kelly's asking me about flat memory wire. Oh, Thelma Holmes. She's asking about which which kit were you after, Thelma? Um, the the honeycomb kit I think was maybe only six pounds or something like that, or maybe even uh, around about there. And the the dancing cubes kit is only eleven pounds, um, which I'd say a pound uh, is about a dollar ten to a dollar fifteen. Um, so that's around about the the pricing of of those uh, just there. So I'll just continue weaving just now. Um, Ah, Risa says, good morning. I just popped in to say hi before I fall back asleep. Thank you for uh, watching. Carissa, I think it was. Uh, she's a regular. She jumps on all the time. Don't forget, you can watch this video if you've only just popped on now. You can watch the whole video where I go through all the techniques on using the memory wire and making these little head pin pieces in the, uh, on, the, on the replay, which will be at the end. But don't forget um, to share the video, everyone. 
And if you want to be notified when we do videos more often, um, head on to the bead uh, to the link at the top in the description where it says um, uh, where it says to subscribe because then we can let you know in email form, uh, which we did to anyone else who's subscribed already. Um, you, you'll be informed when we do new videos. So it's really, really great way if you like these tutorials and videos. One, share them with your friends so they can enjoy them too. And then two, um, definitely subscribe to our newsletter, which the link is up in the description, um, so that you'll be notified when we do more tutorials just like this one. So you can see this is really starting to come along now. I will do it all because it doesn't take very long once you once you really get going, once you're cooking with gas, um, you can see I've sort of turned it over now because it reaches a point where it's much easier to work sort of in the same looping direction. But I'll just show you the, the gist so far. Look at this. Here we go. Isn't that starting to look fantastic? If I get my finger underneath, I mean, obviously, it's still a bit loose. But if I've got my finger under there, you can see that really starts to come together and that rose gold color is absolutely beautiful with the purple and then looks really spectacular i'm really happy with that it's really coming together nicely so i'll just continue on until i've finished all of my little links joining all my links you got to make sure you don't accidentally miss any because it's very easy to do uh, if one of them is sitting in the wrong spot you can almost connect to the wrong link so just make sure you don't do that uh, and then you just continue along until they're all linked up. Um, here we go. Um, there we go. So what do we what do we think of my of my bangle so far? This is Jermaine's own personal design that she's uh, come up with um, for this little bangle, which I think it's a really quaint, cute little thing. Um, once it's all finished off, just really, really effective. And the crystals uh, sort of give them a great sparkle. And then those metallic rounds really match in as well. And everything's just sort of all really comes together so nicely and just looks absolutely fantastic. Um, but yeah, it's, it's quite a, a quite a quick, simple, fun little project to make. I try and do uh, lots of sort of difficult levels Oh, Vicky, don't forget your tea. It's too late for that. It's way too late for that, Vicky. My tea is, is long cold now. It's probably, you know, stone cold like Steve Austin, if you remember that guy, uh, the, the wrestler from the 90s. Um, but yeah, that, uh, that, that tea is long gone. I will be adding boiling water to that at the end. I'm sure Maxine uh, will be hopefully showing me that by the way what sorts of things would you like to see in the future i know i do sort of varying difficulties do you prefer the easier things do you prefer the more difficult projects do you want quick makes do you want ones that are sort of a bit longer a bit more involved um tell us comment i want to know what sort of things do you want to see coming up in the future so we've got um obviously the we did kumahimo last week which you can jump on and check that video out which i i'll just show you really quickly as well i did uh, i've got just here a little kumahimo piece with gemstone chips so that works um quite nicely and easily as well your your gemstone chips work really well on on kumahimo which you can make um really nice things like that um but yeah the the kumahimo if you want to watch the video that i did uh on on saturday that will show you the technique you can you can use whatever beads you want and like i was just showing you there the the gemstone chips work fantastically for for doing those little kumahimo projects as well so definitely um check 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 out the kumahimo video um as i've said i'm going to be doing the dancing cubes on saturday so that's a super sparkly one uh which is a bead weaving project um and then i'm going to macrame i'm trying to get really varied as, as varied as i can so macrame next wednesday with the with the honeycomb crystal bracelet that was a a, a big favorite of mine and um if you didn't see it 
uh, I'll just see if I can pop it on the screen. Uh, we had a lady send in a picture of hers that she made. Uh, Sue, she was watching earlier. I don't know if she's still here. If she is, um, you know, this is the, the 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 honeycomb bracelet that Sue made, which um, it's a uh, that one's using macrame. So I've almost let's just pop back. I've almost finished uh, my my little bangle piece here. So it is coming together relatively quickly, uh, which is always good. I don't have too much further to go, thankfully. And then we're all finished. I hope I haven't dropped some of my crystals because then I'm going to be short a few. Hopefully they're, they're here though. Otherwise I'm in for some grief. I think I might be. Oh dear. Um, but yeah, so you just continue along and I'm almost there. And I appear to have dropped two of my little crystals. Great. Good work, Matthew. Well done to you. Um, where are we? I'll just have to grab a couple extra. I'll have to cut them off. One second. Sorry about this delay. I need to grab myself a couple extra crystals. Um, if you fancy uh, grabbing the crystals, they are available on our website. Um, if you head to the link in the description, that's where you will see them. Um, uh, so yeah, the link in the description will take you to where we do have all the products for making this uh, little bangle. Um, oh, I'm almost out of shot there. Um, so yes, let's just pop on the last couple of crystals now. Last little silver bead. And the last little as well on you get and now here we go i'll just pull this all the way around so you can see again my bangle is now finished i'm not going to do the big reveal quite yet i'm going to make this little looped piece so now that i've done that you can see if we have a look at the diagram i'm pretty much at the point where um if you um oh kelly check your chip pile it might be hiding in there do you know what kelly you may have been right. I don't see them. I think they're hiding from me, but it doesn't matter. Luckily, I had some extra crystals on hand. Um, so um, let me just finish this last little bit here. You see that little picture in the top corner there? I'll just show it up big. What I'm going to be doing now is just popping that piece. So see how I've got four little loops? So it's a little bit difficult to sort of see, but those are the two ends coming together. So um, it's really quite neat once you've got it finished once you have those little ends uh, all all done and sorted and neat like that and everything so um uh, i'll just zoom in for you here we go let's see if it'll zoom in uh, here we go just pop that there and so what i'm going to do come on now zoom in is create a little loop just here at the very very end so that it will be the same as my diagram just here. So see that little diagram, how there's four little loops on each, um, there's a loop on each little corner. I need to do the same with this one just here. So this, I'm gonna turn this into a loop by bending it in towards the center of my little piece just here. So make sure it's nice and tight, nice and firm. And then I will cut it so that I have the amount I need I only need about a centimeter's worth, maybe a little bit extra, and about there, that should do me. I'll even use an extra tool to hold it just to make sure. So cover everything so you don't lose any pieces. There we go. And now what I'm going to do is just bring in my tool, and I'm going to roll it in towards the center of the circle. So don't forget, if you want a smaller loop, you go towards this end. If you want a bigger loop, you go towards this end. I want a relatively big loop so that it doesn't come undone. Just here, I think I'll go. And then I'll just rotate it nicely in towards the center, like that. And there we go. That's pretty much done. But first, I'm gonna just bend it around a little bit more just zoom out so we can actually see what I'm doing a little. Here we go. Mm -hmm. 
And do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to add a little embellishment. This isn't in the instructions, so this is only for you people who are watching. I'm going to create a little dangle off one of the loops because I think it just really finishes it off and makes it look beautiful. So what I'll do, it'll just give me a nice little chance to recap my oops, my little pieces here. Just get that to rotate in. There we go. Now that's in. So what I'm going to do is with my beautiful finished bangle just here. Here we go. How's that look? What do people think? But I'm going to just give it a really nice finished embellishment. I think it just looks beautiful on my hairy arm. What do you think? Oh, beautiful, hairy, hairy and gemstone together at last. <laughs> but yes, um, this is the, so this is going to be for Maxine, obviously. But yes, there's that sort of finished design right there looking really effective, really nice. Um, I'm just going to show you a little something that is not in the instructions, but will look really effective, I think. So because I've already made a little piece like this, what you can do with these little bits just here, um, or you can do it if you want to have a head pin, but you can, I'm going to do it like this so that I could attach a charm if I wanted to, create a couple extra of these and make them little beaded charms to hang off the end of your, your little piece just there. So I'll just zoom in and touch. Here we go. Grab my tool just here. Caroline says, beautiful. So does Monica. And Sue says, it's really lovely. Thank you all very, very much. I appreciate that. Um, now, so what I'm going to do is just open up the loop on this little segment here, which I know this is a different gemstone, which it could have looked really nice. I guess I should have thought about this earlier, that I could have done the dark amethyst, then the, then the the lavender amethyst and the dark amethyst and the lavender amethyst. You can sort of mix and match your, crystal, your your gemstones if you wanted to. But anyway, I'll just pop that one little piece on and attach to the very, very end like so. And now you have this really lovely, you can put anything you want here. It doesn't have to be more gemstone chips, but then you have this really lovely little piece just here and if you had like a flat bit you could finish it off like that because you have a loop I don't have one here unfortunately but you could put like um uh, a little a little charm if you wanted to in there there's there's a lot of different uh things that you can do to sort of just embellish the end so that when you're wearing it I mean you could put one on all four but then you've got this lovely little dangle at the bottom that just adds to it and makes it look really fantastic and finished and have a little charm if you want to make a little charm on there um but yeah so that is my beautiful beaded bangle um just there which is all finished but yeah usually i'd say instead of doing one with a loop probably just do one that has a head pin um, on there, but that will give you the idea of the sorts of things that you can that you can make. So there's my little finished design. Like I said, don't forget, I'll just show you one last time on the website. So if you head to our website, there's a link in the description that will show you, that will take you to uh, the, the exact page that you want to be at. But um, that is just here, the gemstone cuff tutorial. The link will take you exactly to it, um, just there. And on there, you can see the pattern for what I've just made is completely free. There's a donut bundle, which has eight strands in it. Again, um, that's on discount. We've got chips here, lots and lots of different chips, which they're all just pound ninety-nine for a 32 inch strand, which is a bargain. All the memory lights here, head pins, everything is in here that you might want or need in lots of different colors that you can do it. Um, whatever it takes you fancy, there's lots of different options. They're all in there. And then if you're going to be joining all my tutorial on Saturday, um, on here, I also have my Dancing Cubes bracelet tutorial uh, just 
uh, this is where you'll find all the products. And here is the honeycomb. So the 27th is the dancing cube. The honeycomb is on the first. And one last thing I'll show you. If we have a look here at the menu uh, on our video tutorials page, I'll just take you there. This is the video tutorials page. Just here, you can see all of the videos that we have done already. So this was last Saturday's two methods booted Kumahimo tutorial. We've got our floating jewelry one, jazz. There's a nice beaded clasp. And if you have a look, um, this one was very popular, the the, bead, the the rainbow hearts tutorial. That one was very, very popular. Same with our herringbone uh, rope there, um, rainbow earrings. And then if you load more, you've got some of our older videos, which they're not live. These ones have been done by Jane and they cover lots of different techniques all in here. And you can just keep loading. I think there's about 100 different videos uh, that we have. Um, and now if I just pop back over to me, so don't forget, if you want to head to these, you can find all of these on the website, which if I just pop over to me, I have a feeling I'm a bit out of sync, unfortunately, sorry. So apologies for that. I don't know why it's been a bit funny today. Uh, a little program that links the, the camera to the, to this, uh, to the computer is, is giving me a bit of a, um, a bit of a delay. So, Sorry if there's a, a, a considerable delay with with the, the video right now. Um, but yeah, my apologies for that. Oh, uh, let's have a look and see if we have any live videos, uh, pictures that people have sent. So don't forget, if you, if you want to be featured, I didn't talk about it too much because we mainly do it on Saturdays. If you want to be featured on the show, send us a photo of what you've been making, uh, what you've been doing, what you've been going, uh, getting on with. Um, uh, send us a picture to live at bspider2.co.uk. Uh, I've just got to add in, there's some more pictures that people have been sending during the show. I'll just add them in and I will show you everything that we've been sent. Uh, oh, come on now, it's misbehaving. Uh, here we go, I'll just add in a few extra pictures and uh, show you what we've got. So we've got... Ooh, lovely, lots, lots of things extra. Uh, so um, here we are. So I'll just show you the first one. This one here, Monica has sent us in some some Sarawakian design necklaces. I think that's how you say it, Sarawakian. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, thank you to Monica. They look absolutely stunning. I think that's done in Peyote or maybe Brick Stitch. Uh, but that is so intricate and beautiful. Um, so that is one of the designs that we've done. Um, here we are. Kelly in Australia. She's made some beautiful little uh, wire dragonflies there. I really like those. Those are super cute. Their little wings look fantastic. I love them. Uh, so thank you, Kelly in Australia. By the way, Kelly, you, you mail, you message in very, very often. You're watching all the time. Whereabouts are you in Australia? Um, you know, I'd love to know whereabouts uh, you, you hail from. Um, here we go. We've also got Kelly in Australia, another one she sent us. See, I told you, she sends lots of pictures. Uh, this one here, Kelly has done, looks like a really beautiful triangle uh, shape around a rivoli. Uh, that would make a fantastic pendant, wouldn't it? Um, I really like that. That's a beautiful design. Um, what else have we got here? We have Sharon. She's made something fairly similar to what I made today, really. Uh, she made this in 2015. So this is her design made with memory wire. That looks lovely. She's used pearls and little crystal bicones. And I like those rice shape um, pearls as well. We have those too. Um, and it looks like lots of really lovely sort of findings and tubes and things on there too. Uh, so those are, ooh, wrong button, oops. Uh, those are all those. Yes. So that's what I have so far. Don't forget, um, you can be on the show too, which I'll be showing them on Saturday. Definitely send us your pictures to live at beadspider.co.uk and I will try and get you in as soon as we start the show on Saturday. Um, but yeah, so just a quick recap of what I did. Uh, I made this beautiful bangle so don't worry if you missed the tutorial um oh i'm quite a way out of sync now for some reason don't know why sorry about that um but yes 
I made this beautiful bangle here, which included, I'll just go through the instructions step by step real quick. I had to cut my memory wire into two pieces um, just so that I could have one for the top and one for the bottom. I had to create loops on each side. Then I made lots of these little pieces just here, um, 17 of them in total I had to do, top and bottom, um, for the size brace that I want. If you want more, if you want less, you can do whichever. Um, but yes, I made these little pieces and turned them into fully beaded little pieces like this. Then I created, uh, put all of them onto one piece of memory wire. So I started with a link and then I went um, a seed bead, uh, no, a crystal, then a round bead and then a crystal, followed by the next link all the way around until I had completed it. Then I put loops at both ends of my piece of memory wire just here. Um, then, uh, there we go. I joined the second piece with the, the second piece of memory wire by passing through the loops, adding my, my same design as the top bottom as well, and then just continued around threading, threading, threading until I got all the way to the very, very end when it was complete and just added on a second loop to the other side. So I had four little loops. And then as a bonus for you guys who watched today, I also added in one last little charm at the very, very end, because I think it's a fantastic way to add to your design and make it look really professional. Um, so we've had a few people. Carolyn has asked us about the Coco Lariat. Will we be bringing that back? I am thinking of doing a tutorial about that one. If there is um, an opportunity coming up, I have to check the stock on our pendants. Those are the, the, um, the, 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 the factor that will allow us to make more. So I have to check and see how many of the pendants we still have. Um, we also, don't forget, I'm going to be doing, um, coming up this week, uh, no, next week. So on Saturday, I'm doing the Dancing Cubes bracelet, which I showed them to you. They're really sparkly crystals and see how they're all higgledy piggledy jumbled so that they look um, like they're dancing with each other almost. That's going to be this Saturday, which I have some of them here, which I can show you. Um, let's just get those on screen for you to have a look at. There they are. Uh, so they are really lovely because they're ultra sparkly. Um, I love how much they sparkle and catch the light. Uh, they, you, you really see it when it's not quite in focus. But yeah, there's, um, this one is my personal favorite, which is the uh, Magenta Sunset, I think it's called. And then we've got another one, which I really, really like as well. Uh, these are my two personal favorites, which it, this one here, which I'll just put it on, whoops, dropped it, uh, uses the matte, matte colored uh, green tiles, uh, cubes. So this one's using three millimeter cubes, but don't forget if you head to that um, link that I put at the very, very beginning of the comments section, both on Facebook and YouTube, you can find it there. You'll find the, the instructions for that if you want to study in advance. Um, that's available. So that's the Dancing Cubes. And then next Wednesday, I'm going to be doing the Honeycomb bracelet, which is this one just here. And each of those, there's quite a few different colorways that we have, but they are really effective. And again, that is going to be with macrame. So um, uh, thank you very much for uh, joining me. Um, hopefully the, uh, oh, so we've just had a lady ask Anna in Argentina. She's asked in Spanish, but luckily Facebook translates for me. Um, Anna, in Argentina, you can get it from us. We ship to uh, the whole world. So we ship even, we send our products all the way to Argentina. We send them to Australia. We send them um, to, there's people in Malaysia. Lots of people in the US are ordering. Um, if you are ordering in um, 
North America, it's a flat rate, six pounds 50. So it doesn't matter how big your order is. We had a lady just uh, just recently place a very, very large order, but six pounds 50, that is all you pay for your postage. Um, so that's USA and Canada. Um, if you are in Europe, again, it's flat rate, uh, six pounds. So um, people in the Netherlands, we've had some Germans, French people as well lately, uh, and Spain. Um, that's a flat rate again as well. And then if you are in places like um, Asia, Australia, New Zealand, South America, we do um, invoiced postage. So you place your order and you don't pay for postage then, what we do is we weigh your parcel, figure out exactly what um, size and weight it is going to be. And then we send you an invoice so that you're only paying for the postage of what you use. So essentially, if you placed a really small order, you might find that the postage is really inexpensive. If you place a really big order, um, you'll again, you'll only pay exactly for the amount that you um, are using. So it's uh, a very, very good way that we tailor the postage to be the best value for our international customers. And as always, last but not least, if you are in the UK, uh, just like us, as long as you become a member on our website, which if you head to the homepage of our website, um, it's right there on the desktop. There's a little icon, it says log in or register. You can press that. Or if you are on the tablet, I think it's in the little menu. So in the top left corner, there's three little lines. Um, and in those three little lines, it will tell you just there at the bottom, I think it is, um, how to, it tells you where you can register. Um, but yeah, definitely share this video, subscribe to our newsletter, which we've got a link for up in the description as well, so that you can be notified when we do more videos. I will see you all coming up. Oh, um, we've just been asked, what's the flat rate to Europe? Um, it's six pounds. Six pounds is the flat rate, uh, flat rate uh, for postage to Europe. Um, but yeah, um, yes, as I said, I will see you all on Saturday, 1 p.m., same as always, so 1 p.m. UK time. Um, definitely thank you all for joining in. We've got people saying goodbye already. Um, June says, thank you so much for your tutorial showing us how to make beautiful products. I will look forward to the next one on Saturday and we'll get busy on trying to make today's bracelet. You are great. Thank you very much. Oh yeah, Vicky. Um, yes, if you become a member on our website, postage is free. So spend £10 and you get free postage. Sorry about that. I got distracted. Um, yes, free postage for our members if you're spending over £10. Otherwise, it is £2.25 um, if you're spending under £10. And if you are... Um, uh, if you are not a member, again, £2.25. Um, Colleen asks, how much is a pound? Uh, whereabouts are you, Colleen? Because if you are in the US, I think one pound equates to a dollar ten cents or maybe dollar fifteen cents around about. Uh, I don't know exactly today's exchange rate. It's usually between a dollar ten and a dollar twenty. Uh, varies from day to day. Um, but yeah, that. Um, uh, should be around about the, the the exchange rate, but if you're from somewhere else, let me know and I will find out approximately where um, where what the exchange rate is. You can also uh, check the exchange rate for yourself if you want to. Ha ha ha! One pound is sixteen ounces. Yes. Well, uh, I don't think I'd get very far trying to pay in ounces. You know. Hi. Here's here's sixteen ounces for uh, for a lollipop today. No. Um, but yes, uh, if you another technique, if you want to know what the, the exchange rate is at the very moment that you're buying, you can go into Google and you can type how many, um, you know, you can say, because pounds, we call them GBP, and then US dollars is USD or whatever currency it is that you want to use, you say, um, you know, how many GBP for a dollar. You can just type it in like a question into Google and Google will tell you um, exactly the exchange rate of that particular day. Um, but yeah, 
I, I don't know what the exchange rate is exactly at the minute, but because of all of these things that are going on, uh, it's fluctuating quite a lot quite quickly. So um, it changes quite a lot from day to day. Um, but yeah, um, I will hopefully see you all on Saturday morning, bright and early, if you're in the US, in a nice middle of the day, if you're here in the UK and in Europe, and um, late at night if you're if you're further further around towards the rising sun so in asia and in australia and new zealand and things um but yes thank you very very much don't forget to send in your pictures for um saturday's tutorial and i will see you then um once again as always thank you all for watching i really enjoyed enjoy doing these tutorials for you all uh they're lots of fun and i hope you guys enjoy them too so i will see you all um, in a few days time um, but yeah we've got Marcia said goodbye as well Caroline has said goodbye um, Mary in Puerto Rico she's just said goodbye oh Colleen she's just missed the show for today yes you have but I will send you a link in about two minutes time um, that will let you watch it um, uh, from beginning to end, I made, wait, I'll just show real quick because one lady said she's missed the show. If you missed this week's show, I made this lovely little piece just here. But don't worry, Colleen, I will send you a link so that you can watch it from the beginning to the end. Um, but yes, thank you all very, very much for watching. Um, uh, and I will get that um that link to you colleen and i will see you guys all on saturday so as i said thank you very very much for watching uh and have a lovely day see you later bye bye